Welcome back to another video, it's Bath City pre-season predictions, although it's during the season unfortunately, I was supposed to do it before MK Don's game, something happened, don't know why, Sched scheduling maybe, although I uh, want doing a lot of videos around then, I uh, thought I'll do it the week after, forgot uh, videos took place and uh, forgot to do it, but uh, don't, don't know how many views it'll get, don't know if you like it, but please do, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below on the video, let me know your pre-season predictions uh, from Bath City. Um, although we are three games in, although some predictions were made before the season started, I will add. Um, so we'll get straight into it then with the top goal scorer, who I think Bath City's top goal scorer will be, it's going to be Andy Cook. I expect him to get around 25 goals this season, obviously how fast he started already getting two goals so far this season. He's looking leaner, he's looking meaner and I think uh, we'll get the same Andy Cook that we got in the 22-23 season and that will mean it will obviously um, break into the to the top three, I think he would overtake James Hansen with 25 goals a season. Next up, we've got the Santa Award, the Gift Award, um, the Most Assists Award. Because um, obviously if you're assisting, you're gifting, who gifts? It's Santa. Um, I'm going to go with Andy Cook again. Last season he got around the 10 assist mark, it might be 9 and he was our top assister last season. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure he was. Uh, so that means he'd get around 35 goal contributions this season, which would be a mammoth amount. Players who could come close and reasons why I didn't go with anyone else. The number 10 position, we've got, what, eight players in there currently. We'll probably uh, go in with six uh, in September at the end of the transfer window. So for me, they're going to be rotating. They ain't going to be a consistent pair in there. Ring backs, I don't think, contribute enough assist-wise. And uh, second striker, Kavanagh. He ain't got the technical ability for me, um, so I think Andy Cook will probably end up chipping in with the most assists again this season. Air travel, you saw this one last season at the end of season awards, now it's staying because this is the most improved player. Now I've got two players, um, now this one is it's slightly impact from the start of the season, so I'm going to go with what I thought from the pre-season, which was Callum Kavanagh. I thought he'd be the most improved player and I just thought he'd go a level above what he worked last season. I thought we could polish him and develop him further in his technical side of the game. That hasn't been shown so far this season. So three games in what I've seen so far um, and from three seasons as well because I liked his pre-season and from last season from a bit of criticism he got. I'm going with Clark Odwa. Um, you know, I, I think... He's got the, the, I think he's our best player technically on the football pitch when he plays, how he keeps the ball close to his feet, how he moves and glides through players. And I think if he can get a win a game at some point during the season, uh, I, I think he'd be right up there um, for, for, for us if he can feed that confidence to him. Um, but I will have to give it to uh, Callum Kavanagh because that's what we're going to do in the pre-season. So that already ain't looking too great, but there's still another 43 games. Uh, he's here again, the Cliff Award. I hope you had a good summer holiday, you young ones. Um, but, uh, oh, you old ones, um, of, of course, uh, you can still travel. Um, but, um, you, you know, be, be careful if you're going on ill health. But, um, yeah, I hope you have had a good summer holiday. In England, uh, it hasn't been too great if you don't live if you're living abroad, because uh, we will have bantams who don't live in England, um, who might maybe watching the channel. Um, so yes, um, you're not missing out on anything here. It's just rained all the time, unfortunately, um, as typical summers go. Uh, I've I've got three written down for some reason. Um, Kavanagh um, is on there because of the start of the season, um, but he, he wouldn't be getting it. Uh, Halliday as well for the, for the start of the season and Jamie Walker. Um, all have had an impact on the start of the season. Um, but I suppose if I were going to do it from um, pre-season, I'd probably edge with Halliday just because of how brilliant it was last season, the high mountains that he was climbing um, in terms of getting you know the accolades, in terms of getting the praise compared to his first season. There's, there was always going to be a drop-off in my mind. No contract there, an, another year. Um, so I'd probably just give it to him, but it doesn't mean he's going to fall off a cliff. It's just a hard award to give it. It ain't an award, is it? It's just a hard thing to predict um, a player having a poor season. And it's the same with a flop, which I'll get on to later. Um, but yeah, I think this case is for Walker and Kavanagh as well. Um, the most likely is looking like Kavanagh, but in the pre-season, I probably would have maybe edged with Halliday. So I'd have to um, stick with that. What reward the most consistent player? Now, Sam Walker's in this as well because he's Mr. Consistent. He makes save after save and keeps us in games without really getting the praise. If it was Harry Lewis making those saves because of his personality, he'd be getting more praise. He'd be getting talked about a lot more 
but Sam Walker just gets along with his business. So, you know, like like Walter, he just, um, you know, he's, he's there when you need him and he's consistent. And Neil Byrne, now in the pre-season, I'm thinking this as well, I, I like to be in pre-season, obviously the start of the season, I've been quite, um, you know, I've, I've been high in praise of Neil Byrne. I think he's been solid in every game. Um, so I'm going to give it to Neil Byrne. Um, I think he will be a good replacement for Matty Platt in terms of consistency and just being solid throughout games and uh, using his aerial ability and just getting a 7 out of 10. And that, that's what that award is for. So I'll give that to Neil Byrne. Uh, best signing. Now this is statistically on what I have given these players when they have signed for the football club. Um, I've just realised that I haven't turned my ring light on. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do it now and you can see the difference, um, especially when it's quite late. So this is the difference. It, it's it's ten it's ten forward, isn't it? it it's massive um, difference, and this Pratt forgot to turn it on. Um, so I, I suppose well done for realising halfway through. Um, I knew there was some I forgot, but this is statistical. It is Sarsovic because I gave him a ninety percent on the tick box meter. We still may, might make some signs, but I can't keep leaving it later and later. Um, second was Johnson with eighty five percent, and Neil Burns third with seventy five percent on my tick box meter. Obviously, Sarsovic hasn't had a great start came in with a lot of expectation we'll see if he can fulfill that uh, surprise standout i've got jack shepherd in there um because i just feel like obviously i had a good game against Altingham, came off the bench against mk and surprise standout he's not starting at the minute and i feel like he's someone who's got a real good ability he's, he's got a great strings to his bows as centre back he's got pace distribution uh, strength he's got the lot and he reminds me of the the sort of quick slow fold of a centre back um, and he's versatile as well, so he will get in the team at some point, like John Tomkinson did last season, and I think he'll keep his place, and uh, I think he could be a bit of a surprise standout, because we're not expecting him to start. Uh, player of the season, I've got to give it to Andy Cook, I'd be daft not to, considering um, I've, I've literally said he'll get 35 goal contributions. Young player of the season, now Harry Ibbotson, I think, could break through, but I, I think it's probably a year early for him, I think he'll go out on loan at some point, and then obviously it's Bobby Point, and of course, still only around 20 years of age, uh, still in his breakthrough years, scored on the weekend as well, and you know he's our youngest player who gets any game time. But um, you know, I expect him to kick on again this season, and hopefully he can get a few more starts come the end of the season. But definitely will be our young player of the season if we keep him. Uh, fan favorite as well goes to Bobby Pointon. Who else could be um, the Bath City fans' favorite? Every time he's warming up, Bobby Pointon is one of our own. Every time he's on the pitch, there's a air of expectation and um, you know every time he gets the ball you know the, the fans get off the seat and um, you, you know the, the, the praise is always towards Bobby Point and if we're on a bad run get him in the team Alexander because that could keep him in a job if we're just on a bad run of form or we're not playing well in a game get him on because the fans um, it's just an easy thing for the fans to turn to if he doesn't get Bobby Point on the pitch so 100% the fan favourite and like no other we've had in many years one I don't want to do it's flop and again percentage rise from signings coming in Terry Crike got 55% of the vote for me hasn't had a great start to the season didn't have a good second spell at the club but hopefully he can carry on like it's Saturday and then at the end of the season I won't be giving him that flop award um, but let me know your thoughts on all these as well in the comments down below now I'm going to do my league table thing and I've already said it if you watch the League 2 predictions, I still have us in fourth um, because, like I said, I've already done that. Hopefully we can get in the playoffs and then hopefully we can do well in the playoffs. But um, the way we've started, seven points from three, can't complain with that. Maybe we can get one bit, one place better and get into those automatics, which would be unbelievable as a Braff City fan because we never seem to do it the easy way. And finally, the manager position, will Graham Alexander be in a job come the end of the season? I think he will survive this season at Bradford City. And I think, and if he does, he will equal Mark Hughes' time at the football club with one year and eight months. Um, because obviously, end of the season, it runs through to August. And uh, yeah, so, so that would be quite something. So be our probably uh, longest serving manager since um, Parkinson or, or McCall, maybe 16, 17 to 17, 18 which is again quite worrying about how frequently we, we sack managers but let me know your thoughts in the comments down below will alex 
Alex Ferguson? Why are we going to say Alex Ferguson? Will Graham Alexander survive the season? Uh, where will we come in the league? If you haven't already told me in the uh, pre predictions video of the League 2, if you haven't watched that, it will be on the screen. Uh, who was the flop? Who's the fan forever? Who's the young player of the season? Who's the player of the season? Surprise standout, best signing, the Walter Award. Who's going to be the most consistent player? Who's going to fall off a cliff this season? Who's going to uh, be our um, best performing player who didn't perform as well as previously? The Air Travel Award. Who's going to get the Santa Award? Going to give the most goals? And who's going to score the most goals? Um, Surely it's got to be Andy Cook. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Like the video if you did. Subscribe if you're new. Wonderwood to 700 subscribers. Have a good one.